She is the plaintiff in Garcia versus Colorado. You can follow her on Twitter slash X at Boomstick Babe. Yeah, you heard that right. Her name is Alicia Garcia. She joins us now, and she is at the state capitol where there are hearings going on today with regard to gun bills that the General Assembly is trying to pass, but that she is fighting. Alicia, thank you so much for your time. Hey, everybody. How's it going on? Can you hear me okay? Can hear you just fine. Just tell us where you're at, what's going on, and what brings you to the Capitol today. I am in a telephone booth sitting behind three dollars worth of petition paperwork that RMGO has submitted to the Assembly here today in regards to the quote-unquote assault weapons ban that they are doing their darndest to push through today. I'm surprised you were able to find a telephone booth that those still exist, but congratulations on that. Let's go back in time, though, to when you filed this suit going back to October 2023. Now, the General Assembly, this is in the wake of a shooting, I believe, at East High School here in Denver. They had passed uh, several bills which were signed by Governor Polis regarding a three-day waiting period, as well as raising the age limit to purchase a gun to 21, expanding the state's red flag laws, making it easier for victims of gun violence to sue the firearms industry. Do I have those all covered? If so, which ones are you going after? If not, add to that list and tell us a little bit more about what you're fighting today. And there is a, a very concise list that you can find on Rocky Mountain Gun Owners' website. If you go to rmgo.org forward slash bill watch, there is the plethora of gun control measures that they are attempting to push through, which they've been quite successful thus far at the beginning since the beginning of this year. I am actually the plaintiff against the three-day waiting period that they imposed effectively on October 1st of 2023. So I flew home from a range day that I was at in Georgia that morning, got off a plane, headed to Triple J Armory, purchased my lever action Henry 357 rifle. Uh, big boy, and was told that even though I paid for it, I passed a background check, that they cannot give me my firearm due to this law. So I then signed the paperwork alongside Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and filed suit. We filed a preliminary injunction, uh, and it was turned down. Our judge that we were in front of it was a Carter appointee. He, he's pretty ancient. I don't think he should be... <laughs> sitting on a bench at all because he literally couldn't hear or see anything that we were saying. So we have been denied that preliminary injunction. We have filed an appeal and we are waiting to hear back from that. We should hear back regarding that any day now. Alicia Garcia, our guest here on the Mandy Connell show, Ryan Schuling filling in. This is all happening in real time. She is at the state Capitol preparing to testify at a hearing at the general assembly. Alicia, about what time are you scheduled to do that? So I haven't a clue. They just call us when they call us. That's the issue with these types of hearings. They do this purposely because they know people cannot make it. They file these laws. They hear them quite quickly. And you basically sit around here at the courthouse and wait to testify until your name is called. Last year, when they filed the assault weapons ban, we had over, I think, 600 people show up to testify. Testimony went well into 2 a.m., we have over a thousand um, shown to testify today, so hearing will probably go probably until the upwards of early tomorrow morning. Wow, that's a, a lot of people to show up on behalf of not only Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association, but Alicia Garcia, our guest who is leading the case. She is the tip of the spear in this fight. Take our listeners through maybe those that are novices with guns or have never handled guns before or never bought a gun before why it is so important to you, Alicia, personally, to fight this three-day waiting period. Why not just wait three days? Because evil doesn't wait. That's why. Because nobody in this world wants to encounter evil, and you cannot anticipate the day or time that that will happen. And if evil shows up in front of you that day, I don't think it's anybody's best interest to wait until they are harmed, hurt, threatened, or dead to be able to have an equal fight. And that's one thing about firearms. It is the great equalizer. We live in a time where rationale doesn't account for anything. People walk around every day and they are clueless about their situational awareness and the dangers that they're in. We call them watering holes. So if you think about in the jungle and you're walking around, you know, in the world, where's the most dangerous place in the jungle? It's a watering hole because that's where predator and prey are often found together. And in this world that we live in, our watering holes are gas stations, they're grocery store parking lots, they're 
you know, walking into the gym. They are movie theaters. They're the mall. And this is where predators look for people to prey upon. And predators don't have rationale as to why they want to hurt you. If they have an idea in their head that they want to commit atrocities, they're going to do so. Asking somebody to wait to defend their life is insulting, it's unconstitutional, and it is against the natural right of animal, animalistic nature to have a way to fight to survive. We are guaranteed that right by God, not by the Constitution. The Constitution is something that actually succincts our God-given right to self-preservation, and that's why I'm here to fight. It's interesting to me the timing of all this, Alicia, because as you may be aware, there is a First Amendment case going on at the Supreme Court of the United States with regard to the government colluding with the social media platforms to censor speech. And I think there's a reason why the founders made the First Amendment freedom of speech, freedom of religion, etc., and the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, the first two amendments in the Constitution. Would you agree that the right to free speech and the right to bear arms are our two most important rights as Americans under the Constitution? Absolutely. The Second uh, preserves everything that we have. You can't back up what you say if you can't fight for it. And I think people have forgotten that gun control is rooted in racism. Gun control is rooted in keeping people and the populace under the threat of violence so they cannot fight back against their oppressors. That is the true meaning of the Second Amendment. It isn't about guns. It's the right to stand up against tyranny. And that's exactly what we are facing here nowadays. It's it's not tyranny in the old sense with whips and chains and forced violence in that sense. The, the violence that we are forced to endure now is forced, like you see Trudeau right now in Canada, forcing people to be under house arrest forcing people to medical things that they may not agree to, forcing people to a way of life that is not within their design of who they want to be and prosper under. And when you cannot fight back, you have no say. And that is why preserving our right to self-defense is so paramount now more than ever. Alicia Garcia, our guest, she is at the state capitol today, preparing to testify, could be called away at any moment, but we've got her right now here on the Mandy Connell Show, Ryan Schuling filling in. Boomstick Babe is where you can follow her on X, formerly known as Twitter. As we continue uh, down this line, I want to give people an idea, kind of your background with guns, Alicia, and I know that you're an NRA range safety officer certified. Just how you got interested in guns, why that issue in particular became important to you personally. Well, I was raised in Southern Colorado, uh, in Trinidad and Honey, Colorado, farm with my family, and it was just a way of life for us. You know, it was the way I spent time with my father. We would drive down to the Whittington Center, we'd shoot clays, we would shoot guns on our our land, and it was also a way of protection. Oftentimes, we were out in you know the country on county roads, and there's predators out there. There's there's rattlesnakes, there's pumas, and things of that nature. And as I grew up and I grew older, I began to see that there's other types of predators in this world. Predators that love to target someone like myself. I'm, you know, a, a very small statured single woman. I've lived alone most of my life. And to a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm prime for picking and firearms are the only thing that stand between me and a, you know, six foot five, 250 pound man who wants to choke me out and beat me or kill me. So for me, it was heavily instilled to me quite quickly from my father and all the wonderful, wonderful masculine men that are in my life that I have a right to stay alive. And that right is succincted by me being able to handle myself with a firearm. So, indeed, I definitely have embraced that. And when my father passed away uh, about eight, eight, nine years ago, you know, all of our firearms were stolen. My uncle, his brother, came into the house. My father still was dead in his bed in the house and took all the firearms and jewelry out of the home. I fought it in court for many, many years. It took a lot of money and a lot of time and broke my heart. And I found no justice. So I was back to the drawing bar, finding a way to defend myself and my family and build up our arms collection again to make sure that my brother, my sister, my godchildren, my nieces and nephews, my parents had a way to protect themselves. And I started encountering a lot of bias and racism and, you know, sexualization of me just in purchasing a firearm. And I realized that if I was experiencing this, many other people were also experiencing this. And I, I believe in being solution oriented. So instead of being a part of the problem, I figured I might as well be a part of the solution and started educating people and showing them that they, too, have every opportunity and right accessible to them. The way they can be prepared with firearms and be educated and knowledgeable as well as trained. 
Alicia Garcia joining us. She is the plaintiff in Garcia versus Colorado, and you're pursuing that action through the courts. I know you've been enjoined, and there's been great success by Taylor Rhodes and his Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association in these legal battles against gun control laws that the Democratic General Assembly is trying to pass. But you're also pursuing this in a political realm in the General Assembly with your testimony today, along with those of many others, Alicia. What do you hope to accomplish today? I know you've got some Republicans in the minority who are in your corner, people like Representative Ryan Armagoff, Representative Gabe Evans, who's a law enforcement officer himself. Is there any persuadable aspect to this testimony that you think you might be able to win any Democrats over to your side? What do you hope to accomplish with your testimony today? Honestly, I know in my heart of hearts that they will pass this today. And I know that they will do that because they have no they have no moral code or moral compass that they're being guided by. They have every intention of pushing as many gun control bills that they can right now. My testimony is is very passionate. Uh, I've been testifying against gun control for many years now. I think I've only missed two hearings. And frankly, I'm going to just tell them how I feel. I'm going to speak from the heart because if anything, I want them to know that I'm, I, I've trained my whole life to be a warrior. I'm a warrior at heart and I'm a warrior when it comes to my people. I'm from Colorado. I was raised in these streets. I care very much about my communities and these types of laws are designed to make victims out of my communities rather than empower and educate them. And that's everything I stand against. So I want to look these representatives in the eye. I want them to know my name and I want to know that I will be tireless. I'll be relentless and I will do everything in my power to pursue this. If I have to take this all the way to the Supreme Court, so be it. You're here and there's that path that's in front of you legally. I know, like I said, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association, they've been able to have some victories, legal ones in courts. We hope to be joined by Taylor Rhodes a little bit later on in the program. Uh, take us through that nexus between you and Taylor and the organization Rocky Mountain Gun Owners. I think it's hilarious. Nine News had a story on this last October called them a far right uh, advocacy group. I don't know that this is a left or right issue to me personally when it's so fundamental, like you say, Alicia, it's your constitutional right to bear arms and to protect yourself, to uh, fight off tyranny that might uh, oppress you. And that could come in the form of government that could come in the form of an individual, but just if you do lose this today, as you anticipate, as I anticipate in the political realm, in the legal realm, how confident are you that you can win this ultimately? I'm very confident, sir. As there's so many things that are coming out. You know, we have the Bruin decision. We have other decisions. We, it was just, you know, um, spoken, I think, in the past 24 hours that illegal immigrants have a right to bear arms here in the United States. These are things that people are starting to see that, you know, this is not something that is only stopping at the Constitution. This is a natural right of the human being to have a right to, to fight to stay alive. And when it comes to the legalities of this and people are talking about, oh, we're far leftists, there is no political affiliation to the Second Amendment. This applies to all people. And that is one of the things that the media loves to do is to create a two paradigm debate to divide the people. So the people are fighting amongst themselves. So their eyes aren't on the real terrorists and aren't on the real issue of looking at these tyrants that are both from the left and the right that play golf together. They don't care about us. They hate us all equally. And the only way to enslave a community of people is to disarm them. It's been proven throughout history that disarmed civilizations get enslaved. And I refuse to contribute to that. And knowing that I'm coming here today amongst, you know, hundreds and hundreds of my peers in this mission, I am not alone in this. And whatever we have to do to keep the pressure on them, we're absolutely going to do that. We're starting to awaken people and to see that this is not about being a Democrat. This is not about being a liberal. This is not about being a Republican. This is about your inalienable right to provide for your family, to be able to defend yourself and to live and prosper. And that's exactly what we're here to perpetuate. One final question, Alicia Garcia, our guest, we appreciate your time on such a busy day. And that is, you know, you're going to get resistance from people on the left that in the wake of mass shootings, and there have been several, and they're going to call the United States the most violent gun country in the world and that other countries don't have this same problem with mass shootings and murders and gun possession for people that are criminals and intend to use the guns illegally. What would you say to a Democrat who might question you during these hearings that say, hey, look, 
in the wake of these mass shootings, we've got to do something. Why is it so wrong to have a waiting period, to have a red flag law, to put some restrictions or guardrails on gun rights so that the wrong people don't end up with guns in their hands? What would you say to that person? Oh, boy, the things that I would say. <laughs> um, first of all, it is not the tool by design that is either good or bad. It is an inanimate object. It is the user that depicts how that tool is being used. It is either a tool of liberation or it is a tool of enslavement. It is your choice on which side of that firearm that you are going to be on. And that is not something that I have created. That is something historically proven. Secondly, I would empower them to join me on the range and come let me teach them about the true meaning of firearms, that this is not meant to hurt people. This is a tool of defense. And a lot of people want to polarize the tool, but they, they refuse to take responsibility for everything that has led up to violence because blaming the tool is the easy thing to do rather than enriching your communities rather than mentoring these kids, rather than starting de-escalation, situational awareness, conflict resolution, and enriching our, our youth, rather than investing our communities and teaching them gun safety, hunter safety, and, in, and in enriching them with their abilities to empower themselves, not only in a legal aspect, but with arms. All of those things are too difficult. The easy way out is to blame the gun. The easy way out is to play the victim. I would encourage them to do what is right and take steps to educate themselves and educate their peers and do what it takes to protect these children. The, the state of Colorado has spent over $148 million to housing the homeless. Imagine how that money could have been used to protect the children. How many tier two, tier three, level one operators and security personnel that we could have hired that are trained to provide safe and learning environments for our children. Uh, what that could have done and that could change the aspects of how our children feel, but instead they want to use our, our tax money to pay for the people that aren't even providing towards that income and leaving our children defenseless. To me, it seems like there is a greater design as to why they want us to de be defenseless. You can hear the passion and the knowledge in her voice. Can't wait for her to testify in the hearings today. Alicia, I'll check back in with you after that, but we appreciate your time to start the show here. You can follow her on X slash Twitter at Boomstick Babe. It's Alicia Garcia. She is the plaintiff in the case Garcia versus Colorado that has been enjoined by the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association. Alicia, great stuff. Thank you so much and good luck today. Thank you for your time, folks. I appreciate you.